I met Mike and I stole it. Fuck everybody. Hi, this is the episode number one of our new show. Can I call this a podcast? Presented by me, the most famous voice on the internet. And you may not know but I love punk rock and I'm going to put here some conversations I've had with the biggest names in the scene. I hope you like it because I'm tired of translating stuff and I would like to work with something less boring, like going to concerts and producing this kind of content. Today we are going to talk with Eric Sandin, also known as Smelly, the only drummer of NoFX and a pretty nice guy. My name is Smelly, I play drums in NoFX sometimes. How did you get into the punk rock scene? Well, the first time I ever noticed it was, uh, a, there was a picture in a magazine of a band called the Dead Boys. And I was probably, I don't know, 12 or 13 at the time. And I saw the picture of them and they were this creepy, scary, like, just they looked like vampires it was really weird and, and it and it drew me to the picture somehow I don't know why and then I don't know six months later I saw a dead boy cassette and I stole it from I stole it and uh, I heard the music and I was like what this angry raw this energy is something that I'd never felt or heard before and it just kind of spoke to me like you know I was kind of a misguided youth I didn't know I, I didn't feel like I belonged to anything in that, and the anger in the music spoke to me. And how was the scene? Uh, it was really violent, it was really small, and I had to take the bus like to go to shows, and I didn't really have any friends that were, you know, I had a couple friends that were into it. But um, back then, if you were walking down the street and you were a punker, someone was talking shit to you, you were fighting somebody, it was like you just came off of a, a spaceship, you know, and you, and, you, and you walked around with like this chip on your shoulder, like you don't give a fuck, and you talk shit. To, like it was this angry, volatile thing that it's, it has been lost, you know? And that's what drew me to punk rock was this, just this us against them attitude, you know? Fuck everybody. And everybody was like, fuck those punkers. So it really worked for me and it was really like, it gave me a reason to have anger, even though my anger was mis misplaced, you know? But the scene itself, it was like, the music was fast, it was hot, it was dark, it was scary, it was sweaty. It was in these small little clubs where you had to know where to look for it. It wasn't like this big advertised festival or anything like that. It was really special and it was really um, unique. How did you start it in NoFX? When I was about 15, I met Mike at one of those dark clubs that I was talking about. And he asked me if I, he was, he was playing bass and I was playing drums. And he asked me if I wanted to join his band. And I, I just randomly met Mike. And I couldn't do it because I didn't drive. He lived on the other side of town. I couldn't do it. So I said, no, I, I can't do it. And then about a year later, I got my driver's license and we remained friends, but I got my driver's license and I was playing in this other band and he would come see me play. And he said, hey man, I'm starting this other band with this guy named Eric Melvin. You want to play drums? And I was driving then and I was like, okay, sure, cool. And I was 16 at the time. And so we just started and we were so fucking bad. The band that I was playing in before was this band called Costa Cause. I was about 15 going on 16 when I joined them. And they were all in their early 30s. And they could really, really, really play. Like they were good musicians. So my drumming got good really quick. But then I quit Costa Cause and went to No Effects, and they couldn't play at all. So my drumming went down really quick. You know, we were so fucking bad, but I was playing with guys my age that, that were my friends. So it was, it was worth the payoff. Did you imagine the band could be big someday? It was, back then, there was no, it was just playing shows. Maybe putting out a record, that was it. Maybe playing in front of 100 people. Maybe, you know. And then every year just got a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. So it wasn't like there was this huge scene, like rock bands. They always, they, they had this model. They wanted to play in front of like thousands of people, even when they were like little kids starting off, because there was rock bands doing that. Punk rock didn't have that then, so there was nothing to look up to. What is it like for you to play at your own festival? It's fucking pretty cool, man. 
I feel like it's put more life into us, or at least into me. Been doing this for so long that I really enjoy playing, but playing clubs gets a little old. Play this or that, you know, it's, it's, it's new energy. And, and I really, really, really like that. I really like that, and it feels special. What punk rock means to you? It definitely means something different now than it did when I was younger. When I was younger, it meant like it was my thing and my, it was my underground thing. It was special. And, and then it was, like I said, us against them. Now it's turned into my life, kind of. It wasn't just my thing, like it became my life because without punk rock I wouldn't have, I know it sounds kind of weird, but I wouldn't have the freedom to live the way I, I want to live. You know, it has given me, as it gave me that outlet when I was a kid, that outlet of anger, it has given me the outlet in life to become the man that I have become. You know, I'm not working some shitty job. I'm not unhappily married. I'm not just surviving. I'm living my life and it has given me everything. What was the most important thing you learned through music? Have fun. If you're not having fun, what you're doing, I mean, I know having fun doesn't always pay the bills, but for us, it was just have fun. Because if you're having fun, it's authentic, people see that, it's, you got nothing to lose. If you're having fun playing in front of five people or 5,000 people, you had a good time. And there's nothing better than having a good time. Thanks for the talk, Smelly. All right. Awesome. Cool. This is fun. I think I'll post a new talk every week. Not on Tuesdays because Fat Mike already has his podcast in that day. Maybe every Friday, what you guys think. Can I call this a podcast? Thanks for listening. Subscribe, like or comment. Your engagement is important to us. See you next time.